Hello everyone. Uh, our today's lesson is about Elizabeth Gaskell and here you see our two main contents according to our syllabi and the first one is Elizabeth Gaskell's main role in Victorian literature and her literary activities and the second one is the major themes like class conflict, gender, real love, the value of hard work, etc. in Mary Barton by Elizabeth Gaskell. So let's get started. Um, sorry. So, um, Elizabeth Gaskell, often referred to as Mrs. Gaskell, was an English novelist, uh, biographer and short story writer. Her novels offer a detailed portrait of the lives of many straight of Victorian society, including the very poor and are of interest to social historians as well as readers of literature and she was the first biographer of Charlotte Bronte and here you can see her um, novels um, so Mary Barton, Northern Souls and Vibes and Daughters are the most famous ones but I chose just Mary Barton to discuss and Mary Barton is the first novel by Elizabeth Gaskell that published in um, 1848 and um, the story uh, is set in the English city of Manchester between uh, 1839 and 1842 sorry for uh, sorry for such kind of uh, mistake here the story should be here so um, and uh, this story deals with the difficulties faced by the Victorian uh, working class. It's subtitled uh, A Tale of Manchester Life. So uh, Elizabeth Gaskell wrote her first novel Mary Barton at the suggestion of her husband in order to take her mind off of her infant son William's death from scarlet fever in uh, 1845. The plot is based on the real-life murder of a progressive mill owner in um, 1831 and Gaskell re relied on uh, inspiration from previously published industrial fiction. Her keen observations of Manchester life and her vivid imagination. The publishing house Champman and Hall uh, bought the manuscript for a hundred pounds and published the novel uh, then called The Tale of Manchester Life. And um, Gaskell's pseudonym, uh, Cotton Mother Hills. So her true identity came out by, um, uh, by 1849. Originally, Gaskell planned to title the novel John Barton after the man uh, she believed to be the hero of the story. So this is just a little introduction about this novel and uh, we have several major themes according to this novel. So um, the main theme is class conflict. Class conflict, uh, just John Barton's focus uh, on the uh, disparity of wealth uh, permits every page of Mary Barton. Uh, Barton's character is at the core of Gaskell's uh, advocacy for communication between classes. The author believed that class struggles stemmed from uh, misunderstanding and poor communication. John Barton murders Harry Carson to send a message of violent rebellion to the mill owners. However, Gaskell believed that violence would not solve this issue. Only a shared human experience had the power to make men understand each other. In this way, John Barton is a cautionary character, an example of what happens when communication goes awry. And the second main theme is gender issues, so gender problems. It's almost in the every uh, kind of Victorian novels you can encounter gender issues. And Victorian England upheld strict standards of virtue for young women. 
The way society treats women weakens uh, Mary's sense of agency, makes her vulnerable to predators like Harry Carson. And women in Gaskell's time had to secure their future by marrying or face a life unprotected and alone. As an unmarried woman, Mary doesn't fit comfortably within the confines of her society. It's not until her marriage to Jim that uh, she has an order and secure uh, position. Women could not make choices uh, that jeopardized their marriage prospects or they would face cruel consequences like Esther, who ran off with a man uh, she wasn't married to and ended up alone. And another theme is real love. Gaskell emphasizes Mary's realization of the difference between infatuation and love. Although um, Harry wants to possess Mary, and she knows that he marrying him uh, would make her life more comfortable, Mary quickly comes to realize that Harry doesn't love her the way Jim does. Jim offers Mary solid, real, and unconditional love. Harry's affection might be flashy, but Jim makes quiet sacrifices to ensure that Mary is always happy. And Mary's choice of love over infatuation represents her maturation from childhood to adulthood. And the other theme is the value of hard work. John Barton demands his right to work so uh, he can support his family. And for him, hard work coincides with virtue and morality and allows a man to feel responsible and capable. His downfall comes when he realizes he cannot do honest work because his employers are corrupt and uh, unjust and he lashes out as a result. As a contrast, Harry uh, Carson lazes around all day and in his free time he causes trouble for Mary Barton. Alternatively, Jim Wilson, like John Barton, works diligently to provide financially for his family and Gaskell portrays him as a noble and good as a result. Gaskell firmly supports the idea that idol hands to uh, the devil's work. For the author and her characters, being a hard worker is tantamount to being a faithful Christian. The character of Mr. Barton, uh, Mr. Uh, Carson, sorry, is representative of this uh, as he transforms from a greedy mill owner into a hardworking, responsible employer after uh, rediscovering his Christianity. And the other theme is female virtue. The circumstances of Esther's life uh, drive her to prostitution that she is the most extreme example of a fallen woman in Mary Barton. In Victorian society, a woman's virtue was considered very fragile, and once it had been compromised, she could never repair it. Esther is uh, ostracized and treated like the worst kind of sinner for the only profession that keeps bringing food to her table. Like Nancy in Oliver Twist, if you remember. None of the characters in the novel, nor Gaskell herself, criticize Esther's male customers, the demand that necessitates the supply. Therefore, Gaskell also seems to believe that fallen woman cannot be rehabilitated, although she does portray Esther with sympathy and kindness. And fragility of life, the last theme in this novel, Gaskell portrays a uh, working class life in Manchester as being haunted by sickness and death. As a result, her characters are aware of their mortality from a young age. Mary's mother dies when she is only 13 and she continues to lose friends and family as she grows up. Certainly, for the poor characters, their terrible living conditions contribute to the high mortality rate. However, Gaskell emphasizes that death can be around the corner for anybody. 
And Harry Carson is wealthy and he meets death at an early age. Across classes, the constant threat of death forces uh, Gaskell's characters to appreciate the value and beauty of life. So now let's talk about characters. Um, so uh, Mary Barton is the protagonist. By the end of the novel, Mary represents an ideal of Victorian femininity. Much of the novel traces Mary's development toward this ideal as it comes into conflict with the reality of her social standing. Mary is the ambitious daughter of a laborer. Her prescribed social role is to remain at home, running the household, but she fantasies about the marriage that um, would cross class boundaries and allow her to become a lady. She constructs these fantasies around her thoughts about her Aunt Esther, who ran away with a soldier. Mary imagines her as being well off when in fact Esther has become a prostitute. And Mary's ambition makes her uh, scorn the attentions of a young man from her own class, Jem Wilson. And her involvement with Henry Carson the son of a factory owner, leads to tragedy when Carson is murdered and Jem is arrested for the crime. And the other main character is John Barton, Mary's father, who is almost as important a uh, character as Mary. Unlike his friend George Wilson, John is a working man uh, whose tribulations, especially the death of his young son Tom uh, from uh, undernourishment, have um, embittered him. After the death of his wife, John sinks uh, further into an isolating cynicism, and he does not give enough attention to rearing Mary and is overindulgent with her. His despair of their class standing feeds Mary's ambitions. And the third main character is Margaret Jennings, Margaret Jennings, Mary's best friend. She is the model for proper behavior against which Mary is contrasted. She lives with and cares for her uh, grandfather, Job Blakes, whose behavior acts as a positive contrast to that of John Barton. Margaret, like Mary, is a seamstress, but she does not go out to work. Her long hours of sewing eventually make her blind, but she and her grandfather are saved from penury by Margaret's singing. As her singing takes her away from Manchester, her good influence on Mary abates. And the last character is Jem Wilson, the dependable and honest hero of the novel. He loves Mary Barton and works as foreman in a forge. He is the son of George and Jane Wilson and the nephew of uh, Elias Wilson. He is willing to take the blame for Harry Carson's murder in order to protect John Barton, Mary's father. He is eventually freed and marries Mary, moving his whole family to Canada. He and Mary later have a son, Johnny Wilson. And uh, these are main characters in this novel, so just learn about these four, because I will make exam questions for you uh, with the using of these characters. And the form of the novel, uh, so it's about the genre of industrial novel, so it's so controversial about this novel. Although the work is often... Uh, often classified as an industrial novel, but Mary Barton's plot is at least as concerned with family and romantic relations as it is with the relationship between workers and owners. The action of the novel primarily transpires during the period around uh, 1840, when Mary Barton is 17 years old. Leading up to the main action, the opening chapters set for, for four years earlier, 
Describe two events that set the course for the rest of the novel. So be careful with these events. The disappearance of Mary's aunt Esther is the first event, and the subsequent death of Mary's mother in labor, and this is the second event. So uh, try to remember these two events because again I will use them for your multiple choice questions for exam. And the narrative type. Um, oh, sorry. Sorry for pausing. So we were talking about narrative type. Yes, form of the novel we talked and narrative type. So the novel Mary Barton is told uh, from a third person on the signed point of view. The narrator describes events from several characters' point of view, while primarily following Mary Barton, the narrator can look into the psyche of John Barton and John Wilson or many other characters. This gives the reader a fuller understanding of what motivates each of the characters and what drives them to commit the deeds they do. In the beginning, the narrator frequently follows John Barton, but as the murder happens and the investigation begins, he drops out of the picture for some time. The narrator also addresses the reader directly at times, revealing things that none of the characters know, or offering advice or an opinion on the events of the novel. For example, just before Mrs. Carson discovers her son has been killed, the narrator describes how she is a weak woman. And the next slide is about the analysis of some quotations. Uh, so the first quote, you can pause the video and read the quote and I will give you explanation of this quote. So I hope you read. Here, um, this uh, quote is by John Barton, as you see, at the beginning of the novel. So uh, Elizabeth Gaskell believed that if wealthy people did not help the poor, it was because they were ignorant. She made it her purpose to inform the upper classes of the wretched living conditions that factory workers faced. John Barton's speech has tinged of communist ideology, although communism was not developed in England during Gaskell's time. And John Barton and Gaskell uh, both believe in improving the working class life and each strives to attain this through uh, unionizing, the, through, uh, she, uh, through writing. And Gaskell falls back on Christian principles with the Dives and Lazarus uh, parable, um, which tells the story of a happy poor man in heaven and a cursed rich man in the hell. And here Gaskell separates her own opinions from John Barton's by promising a better afterlife following earthly struggles. And Barton, meanwhile, is present, fighting the injustice that have uh, suppressed him and his colleagues, with little mention of um, comeuppance in the afterlife. And the second quote uh, is by narrator. Pause the video, please, and read it. And here, uh, while Gaskell strives for improved living conditions, she's also realistic about the impermeability of Victorian class structure. And characters who strive to overreach their appropriate social position come to bad ends. Esther provides a striking warning against this behavior, but Mary is also tempted to use her beauty to attain social status thinking it her only option. And however, Gaskell makes a point that wealth and beauty do not necessarily result in happiness. Instead, virtue and a kind heart make a woman a true lady, and regardless of her financial status. 
And through Mary Barton, the titular heroine learns to be content with the she position um, is born into, and she eventually finds happiness and stability, which is enough for her. And I think it's the last, no, a third quote uh, is by Esther, so you can read it, pause the video and read it. Uh, as a friendless prostitute, Esther has few options. Her profession limits her agency and voice, which are already limited because of her gender. So it's also the gender issues, uh, according to the gender issues of the theme. She hardly dares believe that God will even listen uh, the prayers of a sinner like her. In Gaskell's England, they were downtrod um, members of society who were outright rejected from any kindness, especially women with loose morals. However, this lack of communication creates more strife and disregards the Christian principles that Gaskell believes will remedy all social ills. However, Gaskell cannot separate Esther from her status as a fallen woman. She has gone uh, too far and all she can do is serve as a warning to other women, like Mary, against a life of sin, no matter how desperate uh, they become. And the last quote is by Jim Wilson. So it's too long, you can pause the video and uh, read it. Uh, so here, Jem's desire to protect Mary Barton's reputation from Harry Carson relates back to the code of chivalry and maidenly modesty, which were important to Victorian moralists. Most of all, Jem wants to save Mary from shame and disgrace by making sure uh, she maintains her feminine virtue before getting married. Jem's selfless actions uh, epitomize true love, his willing sacrifice his own happiness for Mary's. Carson's disregard for Mary's virtue is a symptom of his general disregard for the working class. And Gaskell, meanwhile, upholds standards of uh, morality in both upper and lower classes and celebrates those who protect this standard. So I hope that it will be interesting for you to read this novel and analyze. For the next lesson, get ready for this novel and I will send you the uh, original novel. Try to read original text. And um, the main purpose to add the quotations to this slide is um, to make you read the original text at least one or two pages. Because I know that not all of you read these novels, but you should read them to um, uh, do to get good marks, good score uh, in your exams. So I hope that you loved it and thanks for watching. Bye bye.